universities are getting left behind is a big part of the discourse and I think that that's wrong. My name's Sean Bain, I'm Professor of Digital Education at the University of Edinburgh, um, but I also um, have a university-wide role as Assistant Principal for Digital Education um, and I direct our research centre in digital education. We have quite a long history now of digital education at the university. Um, so 15 years ago we began to invest quite substantially in digital education practices um, and since then we've developed a big body of kind of online distance uh, provision. So we have about a quarter of our um, taught postgraduate population are distance students and we have a, a large number of around 70 um, fully online master's programs at the university. So we do that. We've also, we were one of the first European universities to run um, MOOCs. Um, and we now have about 52 MOOCs um, across all kinds of different subject areas. Um, so we, we have invested and we've, as for a kind of research intensive ancient university, we do have a lot of digital education practice. Um, what we haven't done quite so much of is systematic thinking about what digital education on campus should look like. So our focus has been to a large extent on online distance learning. Um, so what we're doing now and the project that I've been talking about today has been about thinking how do we develop a vision for the future of digital education which takes into account changes to on-campus teaching. We can't really afford to let the technology drive what our future of digital education looks like. We have to kind of turn the conversation around and say what are the institutional values that we are bringing to digital education. So let's have, let's have extended conversations with our staff and students to try and understand what values they think that we should build our digital education provision around. So that's the project that I've been working on for the last um, year or two. And we've had some fantastic insights from uh, the university community about, about the values that they want to bring to bear, most of which are focused on kind of putting the human at the center of our digital education provision, um, not designing technology for the sake of technology, not necessarily designing technological solutions to practice, but actually saying we are going to use technology to make <coughs> our community stronger, to open up our students to new ways of doing things, um, to try and shift people away from the instrumentalizing education to actually thinking about their time in university as a time to experience difference and to develop and change and grow as individuals. Um, so that's, that's the approach that we're taking at the moment. I think actually we have allowed the biggest influence on digital education to be technological change. Uh, so we've kind of, we have thought about digital education in terms of things like keeping up with the latest trends or students who are, you know, so-called digital natives are going to demand particular kinds of technological environments to learn in. Um, you know, universities are getting left behind is a big part of the discourse and I think that that's wrong. I think actually universities are full of colleagues, academics, scholars who are fantastic teachers and know what they want to achieve with teaching and digital is often seen by those people as a kind of distraction and what we need to do is, is speak to those people, speak to their students and better understand what is, what is it that they want digital education to look like, not what does you know, Silicon Valley and the edtech industry want digital education to look like. So I think we have we have a, a conversation, we need to have more conversations at an institutional level about that values-based approach. So, yeah. Edinburgh University was set up the kind of first series of um, MOOCs back in 2012 and I, would ta I taught on one of them. It was the e-learning and digital cultures MOOC. And we worked really hard there to make the MOOC itself a co-produced space to use social media to let students build the MOOC for themselves and create their own learning experience and their own learning pathway through the MOOC. Um, but that was really hard to do and it's not a model that we've seen replicated very much in other MOOCs. There's, it's still a dominant content delivery um, approach. So I still think there's work to do. If we want to continue to do MOOCs, which we do at Edinburgh, thinking about how we do the learning design for, more, for interesting, rich, diverse, connected MOOCs is you know, a big, challenge but an interesting one, a creative one.
Yeah, it's funny, this sort of discussion about the European MOOC platform has been going on for years and years, and, and I, I know there are interesting MOOC developments um, at the European level, but for me, MOOCs aren't about kind of representing particular um, national or, or supranational cultures. I think they're, they're by their very nature global entities. Um, for me, the, more, the distinction to be made is probably one between for-profit and not-for-profit MOOCs rather than for, you know, US MOOCs or European MOOCs or, you know, we have our own British platform in FutureLearn. And for me, that often feels like a, a bit of a distraction, trying to attach national or supranational characteristics to MOOC platforms doesn't, I, I don't think, make a lot of sense. I think to a large extent it's probably the ed tech industry, which is a massive multi-billion kind of euro industry. And I think that that's, um, that's fine. It's great that there's so much creative creativity going into thinking about developing new products and services for education. Um, but I think it's going to be really, it is really important and it's going to be more important in future to connect up the various stakeholders in the future of digital education. So to make sure that ed tech industry is talking to educational researchers and both of them are talking to educators in schools and universities so that we have this linked conversation. Because I think what we're often finding is that, um, you know, ed tech entrepreneurs are developing really interesting new products, but not necessarily through close contact with the current research in the field. And researchers are often sitting in their university departments doing their research, but without necessarily connecting to um, intensive work with teachers who are actually going to be using um, these educational applications or with their tech developers who are going to be developing them. So I think we need to get better at having those conversations between stakeholders. At Edinburgh, we've got... Um, we just had a new big tranche of money from the Euro from the um, UK and Scottish government to uh, it's called the, the City Deal Data Driven Innovation Agenda, which is designed to do partly that to actually make sure that the university links to um, local to industry um, in the local area and in the region to sort of co-develop and work more closely together in developing things like ed tech. So I think things are changing, and I know there are other comparable um, uh, initiatives as well all over Europe. So I think we do need to get a bit better at that. But I think we also need to remember to include teachers in that discussion. Um, I think universities are going to get better at um, interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary teaching. I think there's a clear trajectory towards sort of developing new frameworks to enable academics to burst out of disciplinary silos and to offer new kinds of um, teaching which connects across multiple disciplines and I think we know now that we need to do that if we're going to address some of the global complex global challenges that we're currently facing um, so I think in interdisciplinarity I'm sure there is going to be an intensification of data and the ways in which we use data to understand teaching um, and I think that could go one of two ways it could either go uh, in, in a way, Hendrik this morning was talking about the white box and the black box. I think we have a, a moment where we either, where we can think about data as being transparent, of being open, about being in the hands of the people um, who are generating it, or we can continue down this path of kind of algorithmic opacity, surveillance, um, surve surveillance culture, surveillance capitalism. So I think we it's going to be an interesting five years. I think t to see how we how we deal with a highly datafied society. And I think, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that we're going to be traveling in the right direction, but I think universities have a big job to do in teaching students the importance of being critical about the way in which data is used. Um, not just personal data, all kinds of data. The ethics um, and uh, privacy issues around the use of data is a massive topic for universities at the moment. So if we get it right, I'm hopeful for the next five years. If we get it wrong, not so much. <laughs> <laughs>